Hey guys, so um, I guess the last video you will have seen, I'm not sure if I'm going to include this all in one video or if I split it up into two videos, but the last video you will have seen I spun up the first 50 gram little skein for my sweater spin and that whole segment was um, no talking, I just I just did it all and I've, um, I will have put music over it and I'll put up little subtitles where it's relevant to explain what I'm doing. But for this next spin, I've decided to just grab it back on the 100 gram skein that I allocated with um, half being the Corydell um, in the deep colour and the other half being the BFL alpaca um, roving nests um, from my fibre share partner. <laughs> so what I decided to do was something a little bit different and this is something I had seen before but I've never actually tried it out myself. Um, these nests are already pre pretty well um, prepped and pretty well like sort of like pre-drafted and fluffed up and they need very little pre-drafting to get ready to spin um, but for the I showed you that before I was ready but for the roving that came like this in a braid um, the fibers are pretty compacted um, and this can happen because of the, it's just very typical and just you know you can see it comes apart a bit like that and you can just pre-draft it um, a little bit like that, loosen up, loosen up the fibres and then just spin straight from it. But I saw something recently where someone takes a piece of um, this fibre, like a length of fibre like that, that much, and then fluffs it out horizontally and then rolls it up into like a faux, faux lag, a faux row lag, and then spins from the end like that. And I've just done two of these and I've spun them up and I'm really enjoying how it's spinning. It's really smooth, really easy. Um, and once I've got it in this form, I don't need to do any more pre-drafting. I can just pick at the end and go. And I really enjoy spinning from Rolags anyway. I've always enjoyed that process from when I first started spinning. I would just really enjoyed it. So I thought this might be a really fun way to prep roving. Because in the past, I have found spinning directly from the braid like this can be a little bit cumbersome and I can end up with thick and thin spots. A lot more and I'm finding actually ironically doing it this way to give me a much smoother result and a lot of people I've spoken to who don't like row lags as much as other fibre preps say they find it hard to spin smoothly from row lags so all I would say is give it a go <laughs> to try different methods try different ways you never know what will suit your style better um, and you know, if I hadn't tried it, I wouldn't have known. And I might have just struggled to spin this and not really enjoyed it. But I'm really enjoying this prep. Um, so I'm gonna quickly show you what the what it's currently looking like, what the spinning is currently looking like on the wheel, and then I'm gonna set up and show you how I prepare these fire legs. Right, so this is how the fibre is spinning up at the moment. It's coming up nice and fine. I'm aiming for like a lace weight single, which is pretty much what I'm getting right now, which is great, because I'm hoping for a fingering weight slash maybe a little bit of sport weight um, in the end result for the yarn. Okay, so now I'm just going to attempt to show you how to make one of these. Um, so all I do, take the fibre and you pull off a piece, I don't know, I guess about seven, eight inches in length roughly, just wherever it separates naturally. And then I just start to tease it apart a little bit. You don't want to like separate the fibers completely but you just slowly starting to tease them apart a little bit and space it out. You're teasing them apart like horizontally so you're floofing it up. So it starts to look a little bit like a bat if you've ever seen, if you've ever worked with a bat before. Um, And there you go, you have a nice, large, quite airy, floofy bit of fibre. It obviously doesn't have to be perfect or anything, but that's how that looks. And all I do is I fold up the end and tuck it in. And then just slowly roll it up. I did try and do this over using a large knitting needle, like a straight needle, as like a dowel, but it just wasn't working. It's just easier to do it by hand. And there you go. We have a faux lag. Now I have two. Obviously, this one was a little bit bigger 
in this piece, but it does the same job. So I'm just gonna keep going and show you how I do the rest. And now I have my faux legs all prepped and ready to go and um, yeah so I guess I just start spinning and I'll show you how that looks as well. of May so it's been a couple of days since I started this um, the second spin for the sweater project and um, and yeah so as you would have seen I decided to turn the roving nests into little faux lags as well and I spun them that way because I really enjoyed spinning the Corydale roving as um, faux lags and it just for me anyway and my style of spinning and what I enjoyed um, I really enjoy spinning from row lags so these faux lags actually worked out really well. It meant that fiber was pre-drafted in a way that just made sense for me. And I managed to get, this is possibly my most consistent spin. And I'm hoping that I get like a pretty decent two ply fingering weight out of it. Maybe bordering on sport weight. Um, I'm not sure if my singles are fine enough to have a two ply fingering weight, but we will see. Either way, this is definitely the finest um, and most consistent I've been able to spin to date and I'm really chuffed with it, I'm really really happy. So the blue here is the Corydale and this blue green is the BFL 
um, alpaca mix. And, uh, and yeah, I really, really enjoyed both spinning it and the fibre prep was perfect for, for this. And I think probably more often than not now on, if I'm spinning roving, I will probably convert them into faux lags first and then spin them. Especially if I want to get something consistent. If I'm going for more of an art, art yarn, then it's not so important. But, um, if I want something really consistent, then I feel like this prep, um, works really well for me. And if you're having trouble, I suggest giving it a shot. It might not work for you, but you won't know until you try. <laughs> and this was something I'd seen before when I first started spinning and I was looking at videos. And it just, um, I just guess I never got around to trying it out. But I'm really happy. I've seen people do this mainly with bats, um, which is basically just like a big sheet of roving rather than a strip of roving as like a braid. Um, so I'll definitely be doing it with bats as well and giving it a go. But I really enjoyed it. And now I'm just going to get on with plying it. I hope to... I finished uh, spinning the singles on the blue-green just this morning, just now, <laughs> about five minutes ago, and now I'm going to sit down and um, ply them together and see what we end up with. I'm really excited to see how this one turns out. Layla, can you come give mommy a cuddle? Can I get a cuddle? Oh, did you have fun with daddy? Yeah, did you outside? Yeah, were you outside? Yeah. Did you have pancakes? Yes. Was it yummy? Yes. Did you go on daddy's bike? Yeah. Was it fun? Mommy's work. Yeah, mommy's kind of working. She's spinning. It's a top, top two. Yeah? You want it to go? You want mommy to make it go? No, the other way. This way. No, Leila, don't touch it. It's the other way. Oh, thank you. Are you helping? Can you let go, Leila? Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, no, no. That way. It goes that way. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, honey. Thank you, thank you. Oh wow, thank you so Okay, no, don't pull it out. Alright, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Can you let go? Let go? Yeah, that bit. You can pull that bit in. Let go. Thank you. Let go. Okay, no, no, no. Let go, let go. We're going to pull it. we we'll push it into the wheel. No, no, don't pull it out.
Are you gonna go see Granny? Yeah. You can give her a big cuddle. Yeah. Yeah. You can go see Molly. Yeah. And Grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. What did you have on your pancake? Layla. I don't know that. Did you have banana? Yeah. And was there Nutella on it? Yeah. Was it yummy? Yeah. What did you have to drink? Yeah. I got a milkshake. You had a milkshake? Yeah. Was it yummy? Oh, is there a big milkshake in that belly? Well, thank you for helping Mummy with her spinning. She really appreciates it. I think I need to put some oil on those hinges. Thank you, Layla. Okay, that's enough. Thank you very much. All right, so the plying is done. All on this bobbin here. So, go up close. I really love how this has turned out. I feel like overall it is about fingering sport weight, which was what I was going for, which is nice. And um, I did have a lot left over, or quite a bit left over on one bobbin. Um, and this was the, was the BFL? Yeah, the BFL alpaca. And I think that was because I ended up spinning that bobbin a little bit finer overall than the first bobbin, which is fine. I am going to be using this fibre again in another, um, with another combination later. So I'll just spin more singles onto this bobbin and then whatever I have at the end, I will figure out what to do with. If I have extras of other fibres as well, singles, then I can just uh, split, ply those all together and we'll see what we end up with at the end. Um, so yeah, now I'm just going to wind off the yarn onto my nitty noddy and see what yardage we ended up with. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Nitty noddy, and yeah, I think I have some decent yardage, but I can't be sure. I'm just going to count the strands and figure out how much I have. All right, so this is the finished skein. Well, not finished. Um, hasn't been washed yet, but the finished so far skein, and it ended up being only 81 grams. So there was quite a bit left over on that spare bobbin, and I ended up getting pre-washing about 223 yards or 204 meters, which is slightly less than I was hoping for. But um, still, if I extrapolate that out for like a 100 gram skein, that would give me around 250 yards, 250 meters ish. I can't remember which now, but um, so more of a like a sport weight type, which is fine, totally good. And this is what it looks like compared to the other skein I spun earlier in this vlog. I'm not sure if it'll be in this vlog or a separate one. I think I might keep it as a separate one. I'm not sure yet. And then the original skein that inspired it. So you can see, even with my terrible lighting, how these all go together quite nicely, colour-wise. And, um, and yeah, I'm excited to see how this is going to knit up eventually. And I realise I'm actually very colour-coordinated with my outfit as well, <laughs> with my uh, spinning. Alright, so that's probably going to be the end of the spinning vlog. And I will be back soon with... Um, with some more spinning I guess. I don't know, I might spin a couple more braids, um, skeins and then come back when I'm spinning the last couple and record some of that as well because otherwise it's going to be a lot of the same sort of stuff um, and content wise I don't want this to get boring but if I have any thoughts or anything along the way I'll be sure to record and let you guys know.